networks signed off at midnight, like the Star Spangled Banner, a flag waving on the screen, said we'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. America went dark at each time zone from midnight or 1 o'clock until 6 or 7, depending on which time zone. So we were uh, challenging something that everybody, as you might expect, said it'll never work. It just isn't going to work. Who is going to watch sports 24 hours a day? Well, our pitch was, and I'm sure all of you have heard of Ted Turner, and CNN and TNT and, uh, and all of the things that, uh, that Ted has launched. He and I, and a fellow from uh, HBO, held this would, this would have been a massive collection of people for some of our first meetings. We went to a new programming convention in Las Vegas for cable television. There were seven people on the panel and five people in the audience. Five. We had bigger audiences stopping for a red light at the corner. And Ted came up with an interesting idea. He said, every time we get some people standing still, let's tell them about what's coming. The cable television. And we're going to give them sports 24 hours a day, and news 24 hours a day, and movies 24 hours a day. And we literally did that in Las Vegas. We stopped at the corner and he said, here we go. And we turned around and we said, have you got cable television? Do you know anything about cable television? And of course, we got blank looks. Nobody had any idea what we were talking about. But we did that enough times that the following year when we went back, we filled the Las Vegas Convention Center and they had to put audio out into the hallways because all of a sudden this was the greatest <coughs> phenomenon known to man. Well, we started off on September 7, 1979. 7 o'clock, we had an introduction with the words that I just recited for you. We had the president of the NCAA visit with us to tell us about all the great things. We had the president of the NCAA, the chairman of the NCAA television committee with us. We had the senior vice president from the Budweiser Advertising Agency with us. We were all gathered in this control room that we had worked furiously to finish, so we didn't finish it. Go on the air. The night ESPN went on the air, we went on the air from a remote truck in the back lot. They actually had to jackhammer through the concrete wall. It was probably only 30 days old, and run cable out to a remote unit. And for the first week, we were actually broadcasting from Bristol, Connecticut, headquarters, world headquarters, for this wonderful new idea. And we were on a remote truck out the back lot, not the muddy black lot, the back lot, because it was a little bit on the rainy side. But anyway, we're standing with all these people, and I'm thinking, I know the first game coming up is at 7.30, because we went live right away. And our goal that first weekend was to start broadcasting and go as long as we had programming, and we went 53 and a half hours. Nobody had ever done 24 hours before, so we, we were off to a great start. Standing, though, going back to standing in that control room with all these people, and I know what's coming up. Sure enough, 7.30, we're now going to take you to the, our first live event, and it was the World Championship of Slow Pitch Softball. A little bit less, a little bit less prestigious than the ACLS or, or the World Series or what have you. That was great. <clears throat> the bad part was, and I was standing right here next to the man from Budweiser, and the announcer said it tonight. The first game matches the Kentucky Bourbons and the Milwaukee Schlitz. Big competitor, Budweiser, back in those days. And he turned to me and he said, are you sure you want to do this? And we had a little fun joking about it. But there was something present that night in, in uh, Bristol, Connecticut, that is still present to this day. And that's the electricity and the excitement. If you go up there and you talk to the Chris Bermans and some of the people, and the last count there were 27 people that were there when we opened back in 1970. There was an electricity, there was an excitement, an enthusiasm that is there to this day. This isn't just an ordinary TV job for them. They, can, they, they get up and they come to work, they are really excited about it. I remember speaking with Chris Berman, 1994 or 5, I believe it was. His contract was up, and NBC was making a big push to get him to come over to NBC because he had, at that time, established himself as kind of an icon in the face of ESPN, and they wanted to strip him away from ESPN, but they also wanted him to be on their air because he was an exciting guy. And they offered a ton of money. And he and I were having lunch down in Naples, Florida. He had been kind enough to come down and speak to a group that we were uh, working with. And he said, you know, my contract is up. I said, can I ask you about that? He 
I said, I went to Steve and said, Steve Morrissey was the president at the time. He said, I don't want any more money. I got more money than I know what to do with. He still lives, to this day, he still lives in the same house that he lived in when he came to work for us. Doesn't do email, <laughs> doesn't have a computer. He's you know, one of those guys, but that's all right. Uh, he said to me, I don't want any more money. I just want you to sign a contract that you're paying the same, what you're paying now, until the year, I think it was 2001. And Steve Bornstein said, as I said, why 2001? And he said, because that will be the season that I will have done the NFL show, Sunday morning show one year longer than Brent Musburger. Now, you see Brent Musburger as an announcer today, but back in the 80s, Brent Musburger and Phyllis George and Jimmy the Greek, and this was a big deal on CBS, they were the NFL show to watch on Sunday morning. And here's Chris Berman and so on. And one of the ironies of it all is I have seen so many people from CBS, including Brent Musburger, ultimately come over and go to work at ESPN. And that's, that's kind of fun. But we're, we're talking about entrepreneurship, and there are people who have said to me, and I, you know, I don't know whether it's true or not, but they tell me it's a, it's a pretty amazing thing that ESPN has done. Well, I obviously know it's an amazing thing that they've done, but they, they're talking about the entrepreneurial side of it. The things that we went through to start ESPN, I can't say curl my hair, but you know, it would curl your hair.